Welcome to the Matt Hastings Podcast. This podcast is really about meeting interesting people and exploring interesting ideas across North Texas. Today's guest is a friend of mine, Carla Nelson. Carla is a vice president at Republic Title and a long, long time resident of North Texas. I thought it'd be fun to hear her story and how the area has changed over the years. So you and I met I think on my first or second transaction, does that sound about right? Yeah. We, uh, I was at Keller Williams and you you guys were were next door. And the seller, of course, picked the title company and she had previously worked at Republic Title. Who was the seller? I don't remember. She had a house in North Dallas. And she's like, I want to use Republic Title. We can use whatever. Mm -hmm. So we picked Mm -hmm. you guys and then we got to know you and you were neighbors. And so that was seven years ago. Can you believe that? Only seven years? I feel like we've known you forever. (laughs) Oh, Oh my gosh. That's because I feel so old. No. um, No. Yeah, so no, seven years ago. I have, yeah. Yeah. So we've done a lot of deals together. And then, um, yeah, we've been becoming friends since then, and you've been investing in our team, which I appreciate. I want to talk a little bit about your story, though. Okay. So for our audience, you are, you work at Republic Title. I do. And what is your role there? I'm in business development. Okay. So I work with customers, realtors, lenders, um, all kinds of people. Anybody, anybody yeah. who would have a need or use for a title company. And now a lot of people don't have any clue what title companies do. I don't yes. want to spend too much time because, talking real estate, but maybe you could tell us. Well, because in my day when I started, people closed at a savings and loan. Oh, interesting. Did you know that? No. Yes. So they would go to the savings and loan office Mm -hmm. and sit there with a generic person and just sign papers. Yeah. It was. They would basically sign their loan, probably issued by the savings and loan. Yes. And so it's more exciting now to go to a title company because we're celebrating with your people Mm -hmm. and with you. So. Yeah. And it's a very efficient process, too. People moving from other states are like, whoa, you can close in 30 days. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's super easy. We can close uh, in two weeks if you want. say California. I think it's like yeah. more like a 45-day process yeah. there. Yeah. And in the Northeast, when it's attorneys, oh, my gosh. <laughs> people get in trouble when they're when they're moving here. And they're like, yeah. no, no, we got to do quick because people yeah. aren't going to tolerate yeah. that. So how long have you worked in the title business? I've been in the title business since 1984. So that's probably... A few years ago. Yeah. And so, and you've been in Dallas area since even before that. Since 1969, I worked for a doctor. Oh, wow. And he hired me. I was 21 years old, and we drove from New Mexico when my husband graduated from college. And he hired me to run his office. And it was a one-girl office. I did Uh everything. You were the one girl. I was the one girl. And he was the one doctor. Yes. Wow. And so what brought you, was it a job, like you guys came here for work? My husband graduated from college mm-hmm. in 1969, and he had he was a civil engineer. Okay. And he got many offers in Texas, and they were mostly, so a civil engineer, we're talking Laporte, Texas, uh-huh. <laughs> Houston, Texas. And there was one offer in Dallas, so he was being hired or sought after by um, oil companies. Ah, okay. Yeah. And so you said take Dallas. Well, we we drove, I forget how long, like 12 hours to get to Texas. Mm-hmm. And we had two cars. We brought our aquarium with us with our <laughs> fish in them. Do you remember the fish name? No, oh, no, no, a lot of fish. Oh, a lot of fish, and okay. And so um, we went to Houston first and we went to Laporte. Mm-hmm. Had no clue. I, I'm. I remember. I'm from New Mexico. That's desert. Mm-hmm. The houses are on stilts. You're talking about on they're the in the air. Yeah, yeah. And I said, "Why are the houses in the air?" And they said, "Because of hurricanes and tornadoes, and high and, tides, and yes, all these oh, high wow. water." Yeah. Hmm. So we went to Dallas and decided we would rather be inland. Yeah. And then the rest is history. So <laughs> you've been here history. many decades and raised your family here. Yes. Uh, what are some spots you've lived in Dallas? We moved to Oaklawn. Okay. We lived on a street called Newton. And the people who 
allowed us to rent there were it, they had no children. There were no children allowed, but they allowed us to move in with our son. Okay, so, so that you guys came cool. here with the son. Yes, we okay. came with the son. And how many kids do you have now? Three. Three kids, who are probably about my age. I bet. My daughter is your age. Okay. My son is your age. All right, and I'm young, of course. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, so they, so your first kid came here with you, and then you had the other kids. Yes. In Texas, and raised them in Texas. Yes. So you lived in Oaklawn first. We lived in Oaklawn. We lived. Uh, we loved Oaklawn. Uh huh. But we had an opportunity to rent a house, and so we rented in West Dallas. That was our first taste of of living in a home okay. in Dallas, Texas. Yep. Then we were ready to buy, and we bought our first house with three other couples. We bought three, four houses uh -huh. together. And we were all, they were all new graduates working for Dallas Power and Light. Oh, wow. And we bought three houses together. Our homes were $25,000. Oh, my gosh. At the time. You can't even buy a car for $25,000. Five bedroom, now. three and a half bath. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's yeah. pretty crazy to think about. And that was in, I think you told me like the Lake Highlands area. No, that was in East Dallas mm -hmm. near 635. And then we built a home in um, in the Lake Highlands area. Herb Zimmerman built our home. Okay. And then after we lived in the home for like four or five years, we were now having to move to Houston. Oh. You didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't know. You lived in Houston. So we moved to Houston, lived there for five years, and came back as quick as we could to Dallas. <laughs> There's this rival between Dallas and Houston that having not grown up here, I never really got into it. But it is funny that it exists that Dallas no, people and Houston people have like a rivalry it, between the cities. It's not really a rival because I wasn't a Dallas person per se. Yeah, um, not then. You're definitely then, now. But uh, when we moved to Houston, my parents lived in Houston, but we bought our home in Spring, Texas. Mm -hmm. And when you're driving out there to the to the neighborhood, Houston is not has no zoning. Yeah. That's too that's too weird to me. Do you want to hear this? Sure. Okay. So we had to pass Booger Red's junkyard <laughs> to get to our home <laughs> in our neighborhood. And we had to cross the railroad tracks and pass the 7-Eleven. And the home was a like kind of like a gated community. Okay. And they were big, beautiful homes, and we had a constable in our neighborhood, and the speed limit was 20 miles per hour mm -hmm. in the whole neighborhood. So it was very, um, everything was governed. It was very tight, and it, we were close to Inside we the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. <laughs> then when you and, got outside of it. And when they asked me, what is the name of your subdivision? I thought that was strange. And then I realized each subdivision has their own swim team, their own tennis courts, their own swimming pool, their little clubhouse. Wow, that's so interesting. And to think there's about. only one way to enter and one way to get out. So you can't just come and go. So it's like a big master plan community yeah, in a way. Yeah. Similar maybe to like Phillips Creek Ranch now or mm -hmm. what are some of the big communities now? Most of them in Frisco, but like yeah. they have these big communities that have yes. their own neighborhoods inside of the, the neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. So when we were living there um, we just, it, everything was so different because it wasn't like in Dallas where you had rear entry garages, everything mm -hmm. was front entry, houses backed up to other houses, mm. and that's history. Yeah. Now yeah. you spent a lot of time in Plano and close to Plano now. Close to Sun. Plano. Um, you've seen Plano change a lot then because Plano's grown yes. a lot over the last yes. couple of years, yes. eight decades. What are some of the things that you think about like that have changed or that you maybe missed? In Plano? Plano or even just in the general area because you've, you've been, lived in a lot of areas and seen the growth happening. It's different. I mean, where we were, it was in Lake, in um, Oak Lawn. That's totally changed now. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's not all those that, high rises. High rises, um, a lot of young people, career-minded people mm -hmm. living there and, and they live there they choose to live there yeah they do live in the high rises yeah but there's still homes there too mm -hmm. just not as many expensive 
very expensive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything's way more expensive when you think you yeah. could buy a house in Dallas for 25000 Yeah, and we sold it for fifty. <laughs> Five years later, yeah. then we built the house for fifty thousand, uh -huh. fifty five thousand, and we sold it for ninety five thousand. Yeah, yeah. And, and now I mean you can't get into Plano hardly no. for under two fifty. No, I used to track. So people need to buy now. Correct. <laughs> I know people. I was listening. I was at a seminar last week, and there was a guy there who does market statistics na nationally from a company called Keeping Current Matters. Mm -hmm. And he came and presented local statistics. But the key takeaway he said was, it's not timing the market, it's time in the market. Because mm -hmm. like, it's just a long-term play with housing. So you're right, right, right now. And and have you seen it change since you've been here? Uh, I've been here a, just a little over a decade. And so when I got here, I lived in Uptown. I think everybody, when they're like a young professional, just goes and lives in Uptown, and then they figure out the area. Yeah. And now I'm up here in Plano. Yeah, it's changed. I mean, Legacy West was kind of not quite in development yet. And then when we're thinking about like the colony with Grandscape, I think Nebraska Furniture Mart was open. It was just a standalone store. Right. Didn't have any of that stuff. Of course, Frisco was the star. Phillips Creek Ranch had just opened, I think, when I got here. And they were selling the first couple of phases. Yeah. And um, yeah, so Frisco's exploded and prospered too since I've been here. And then I don't go down to Uptown too often. When I do, like I'm always like, oh, new high rise or new stores. Mm -hmm. I think what's been impressive to me about the changes, though, are all of the high end stuff that used to be like just limited to Dallas is now in Plano Frisco. Yes. So yes. that's crazy to think about. Um, what are favorite? You you so you deal with clients and you go out to meals and go explore a lot of places with them. What are some of your favorite hotspots to go to? At my age. Well, at any age. I mean, you, you go to a lot of cool spots, though. We do. And you host There's, events. Oh, my gosh. We found a new restaurant. You, see, you always have new restaurants. I didn't think about it. Sueno, Sueno's? I, I don't know it in yet. In Richardson. Okay. And it's Mexican food. It's all family owned. Grandpa is a busboy. What? Grandpa is a busboy. And it's boy. a new restaurant? Yes. Wow. <laughs> So is it like an upscale place or just yes. kind of, all right. Very upscale. All right. And the drinks come, they're bubbling. So it's really cool. We oh, need to go wow. to lunch there. Yeah. Let's let's do that. Yeah. So we used to go to Anamia's a lot, but they just closed, which is so sad. There'll yeah. be something cool. Well, what they did was they there. opened up north. See, everything's moving up north. And that's yeah. the problem. When you ask about restaurants in this immediate area, Everything's just moving north. Well, there's still new things coming here, though, too. Yeah. We're in a real sweet spot. For those listening, our, we're, our offices are off Preston Road, and Preston Road in Dallas is like, you can drive all the way to Dallas on Preston yes. Road. I joke that you can find anything under the sun on Preston Road if you're willing to drive long enough. So when I was first in real estate, I would call on real estate offices in Frisco, mm -hmm. and I would drive down Parker going west, and I would get on Preston Road, two lane road, uh -huh. all the way to Frisco. Like and from from Plano, it was two yes, lane. Yes, yes. And oh, wow. <laughs> so I would cross the freeway. It wasn't 121. I don't know what it was. Something Maybe else. Maybe like a farm to market or something I like that? I don't know. And I would call on Rolliter Realtors. Uh -huh. And they were in an old two story frame farmhouse with a gravel parking lot. Wow. And that's where I called on Dorothy So that's Rollinger. kind of like where uh, Stonebriar Mall is now. It's on the right of, it's on Rollinger Road oh, now. Oh, yeah, 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 Frisco. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's funny to think about, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, Frisco is just, the growth story is amazing. Yeah. Um, well, what do you what do you miss about like old the old times in Dallas? Like, what are, what are some areas that have the changed that you, that you wish were still Park existed? Park in Preston uh -huh. had the best barbecue place, and it was a little shack. Uh huh. Do you know about it? No, but I raise my eyes because <laughs> I think we have a barbecue deficiency yeah. in Plano. Yeah, yeah. And um, I love barbecue. Well, th there was a there was an old tree at the south. West corner of Parker and Preston. Okay. And the barbecue joint was there. And the rest of it was vacant land. Which is no more. Yes. I mean, wow. Yes. Crazy. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, there's like the roadside barbecue spots. And there was a favorite barbecue place of ours called Solly's. It's gone. Uh huh. It's gone. What made it? What made it your favorite? I, our favorite? I don't know because the men who owned it were Middle Eastern. Uh huh. But it was the best barbecue. It was over by Addison Airport. Oh, it okay. Was good. Yeah. Good. I love Texas barbecue. Yeah. I just. But over by Richardson, I think is one of my favorite spots right mm-hmm. now, which is 1050. Mm-hmm. 1050. Yep. You've been, have you been there? Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we have our favorite ice cream place over in Richardson because yeah. we've been there together. Yeah, you and sweet I. Sweet Firefly, right? Yes. yes. That's a really cute spot. And what's yeah. the story behind that? Um, one of the owners, two ladies owned the, the business and one of the ladies had a little girl. Mm-hmm. And when she was four years old, she got very sick and she passed away. Oh. So the mother decided that she would open this ice cream store in her memory. Okay. And so when she opened Sweet Firefly, the ice cream would come from Houston, some ice cream person in Houston. And they would travel there to bring the ice cream back. And she would have little fireflies in mason jars. Electric. Oh. Electric. Oh, not, not real. real fireflies. Not real. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was, and everybody in our neighborhood supported that, and it's gone crazy now. It's really a a, a flourishing business. Wow! So, yeah, it really is. Mm-hmm. I like local shops like that, mm-hmm. and I think they're all over the city, sprinkled around like local spots. But, yes, but like it's, Eddie's Diner. Yeah, that's a great spot in yeah, Plano. Yeah. Sometimes I'll work out in the morning on Saturday and then go there for so, breakfast. So do you know the owner? Mm-mm. So she moved here from Chicago. Mm-hmm. And when her son graduated from high school, he would come and work in the summers at the restaurant, at the diner. Okay. And her name is Lydia. And her son, of course, is Eddie. Ah. <laughs> he wears a black T-shirt and says, I'm Eddie. It points, <laughs> I'm Eddie on the back of it. That's funny. So he still, they still work there i don't know if he does now he may have graduated from college and is probably working it seems like that's been there a little while yeah yeah stay up to date on all things home and lifestyle with my weekly newsletter into the weekend with map where i share the latest real estate updates new videos from my team advice for both buyers and sellers and more to sign up go to hastingsre.com slash itw that's h-a-i-s-t-i-n-g-s-r-e dot com slash ITW. So it's fun. There's a lot of cool spots to yeah. think about. What things do you like to do on a weekend? Garden. Oh. Uh, we used to like to go antiquing, uh-huh. looking for strange things. But yeah. um, we love going up to Texoma and going okay. up to the to the the lake. And we hunt fossils out there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Did you know yeah. that? No, I didn't know that. You didn't? And to, ant- to antique, you kind of have to go on the outskirts of DFW, yes. too. Like, you're going to smaller areas, I think. Or you could go to the Mercantile Mall at Plano Parkway and Central, and the, that's full of antiques in there. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Now, well, the, one of the neighbors I'm excited about in that same area mm-hmm. is the uh, Collin Creek Mall redevelopment. I think it's going to be really impressive, but it I, seems to be slow moving. It's very slow moving. I don't know what it is. I think it's going to have a lake and um, a high rise mm-hmm. living. I think it's going to have a feel to Uptown Dallas. Okay. But it's, yeah, you probably remember when it was actually Collin Creek Mall. Yes. And so you remember too when Willow Bend Mall was yes. opened, I think, right? Is it not open anymore? Well, no, sorry, it's still oh, open. Okay. Now. It's, um, it feels like a dying, dying mall, but at one point, I think it's a thrive, was a brand new thriving mall. Yeah. Somebody told me that was one of the first Apple stores, like one of the first four or five Apple stores that was open was at the Willow Bend Mall in Plano. Or maybe Galleria? Yeah. The first, yeah. Oh, that was before yeah. Willow Bend Mall. And then I hear we have a maybe a, an airport coming to McKinney. I know. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I mean, the, if the growth story is cool. Yeah. Yeah, and they're trying to have commercial service out of McKinney. Yes. Yes. I know. I just think I'm I, I'm <laughs> I'm a bad traveler because I want to fly straight, and so I think why well I, where am I going to fly direct to out of McKinney? <laughs> no, I think you could. I think flights are going to come in from California. Uh huh. And 
That's maybe all like I, Southwest or something too, or some of these other airlines like that, that tend to do yeah, like the off yeah, air. Yeah. Huh. And the, you know, there's a, an area in McKinney that has its own runway for for the neighbors for the residents. Yeah. Well, they have a. I don't. I think I know the area you're talking it's about that I've driven by. Kitty Hawk Lane. Uh huh. And so one of my patients from when I was working for the doctor, she lived on Kitty Hawk Lane. And they would fly into their home. And so they invited <laughs> from us. From Dallas? From anywhere. Oh, okay. And they would fly. They would. Um, she invited us to a 4th of July celebration. And everybody flew in but us. Yeah, because you just drove, right? <laughs> yeah, we drove in. <laughs> so it was a runway. And you just, the, people are flying in on their planes. It's so crazy to yeah. think about. Well, there's that neighborhood in Plano. And Carrollton. Over 50 years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's a neighborhood like that over here in Plano and Carrollton, yes. too. Yes. Uh, Air Park Estates, I think. Yes, that used to there's be an airport. There's not a lot of houses in there. But people still fly in and out of there on, on the smaller prop planes. Yeah. They I, have airplane hangars in their homes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so interesting to think yeah. about. Cool. I had a friend who got his pilot's license, and we drove over or not drive flew. we flew <laughs> to Stevenville Stevensville to the original Hard Eight and they come and pick you up from the airport and you go and have barbecue and of course you're looking at Aww. the fields with cows and stuff and then we flew back to Dallas. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a cool afternoon. Yeah. That was one early on when I first got to Dallas. So you've raised your family here mm -hmm. and most of your family's here now. What do you think about when people are raising their family in Texas? What what were things you'd say to a mom who's... I came from a lovely city uh -huh. in New Mexico. Um, it was it was like the perfect place. I uh -huh. guess when you're growing up, and back in those days, everything was pretty much perfect. You just don't get into trouble <laughs> like kids yeah. get well, into trouble Well, was it a now. small town too? It was about 50,000. Okay, so it's not small. And my parents worked at White Sands Missile Range. Oh, wow. And then from there, they it became NASA, and they moved to Houston. So um, when we lived there, and now we were moving to Dallas, I didn't know what to expect. But as my kids grew up and we raised our family, it was just amazing. It was wonderful. Everything was perfect. Wow. Schools. Yeah. Everything. And so, I think each little community makes its own, has its own personality. That's you know? so true. Yeah. Yeah. Like each neighborhood, especially when you think about up north here, like a lot mm -hmm. of communities are clustered around the elementary school. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, like in Plano, there's a lot of elementary schools. And then middle schools, there's of course fewer of those, but mm -hmm. you, they, you get these kind of pockets that mm -hmm. people make their own. Yes. Yeah, what would what's advice you'd give to somebody who's on the fence about thinking about Texas? Oh, versus uh, like a lot what? of Californians are thinking, hey, we want to move, or people from New York. A lot of people are thinking they want to move, but a lot of people have preconceived notions of Texas that are probably not real. But particularly a parent who's like, I'm not sure if I want to bring my kids there. What would you say to them? I would say, tech, and I don't know that much about the new areas that are blossoming right now like um aubrey those are sleepy little country towns they right? were sleepy they were country yeah towns. <laughs> and so but from what i see and what i hear more people who are, have been living in the uh plano richardson Carrollton areas are moving like their kids are moving further north it's because, more affordable well sort it's of, that but it's a different lifestyle you're not in this city proper but mm -hmm. yet you still have those things coming to the area like Anamia's is going further north yeah and they'll frequent that restaurant they'll love it and they'll build their own memories i think mm -hmm. it's an excellent choice i would not even consider not coming to texas, texas or north yeah. texas yeah yeah um yeah, you're right. You're right about the growth going north, especially mm -hmm. the new. Like, if you mm -hmm. want new, you got to go north, mm -hmm. or you got to buy something in Plano, North Dallas, Dallas, and then tear it down. Yes, because <laughs> there's not really much new stuff there. Yes, I'm biased towards the old neighborhoods personally. I like the the tall trees and yeah. the community feel that we talked yeah. about, and I like being close to stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, there's a lot going on up north. 
What are some fun memories over the years, over the decades in Dallas? We, um, my husband, after he worked for Dallas Power and Light, he went to work for Braniff. So we traveled a lot. Oh, wow. And so we learned how to scuba dive. We got our scuba licenses. Really? You didn't know that. (laughs) And um, we would take scuba trips, you know, to go scuba diving. And that was our, we only had the one child at the time. And we just weren't ready. We were kind of selfish because we were flying everywhere. We flew him to New York to follow the Dallas tornado, the soccer team. Mm. And um, we got stuck in um, one of the suburbs of New York, and we couldn't get a taxi back. (laughs) So we asked if we could ride on the tornado, Dallas tornado bus. So our son was 10 years old or Mm -hmm. 8 years old. And he just thought that was so cool. I bet. Yeah. Rode back with the team. So Dallas Tornadoes, was that? <laughs> Kyle Rope Jr. And that was? Um, soccer. Soccer. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now soccer. Do they still have Dallas Tornadoes or it's? No. no. Uh, and we were, our kids played select soccer. It was, that was the way everybody. Well, sports yeah, are big sports. in Texas. They are I think now. Yeah. People coming Football here. Football was the big thing, but Still soccer big thing. <laughs> soccer has gone strong. Yeah, soccer. We have a colleague in the office who her her girls are really into soccer. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so the select sports is big here. I don't yeah. I grew up in California. I don't recall anything being nearly of course I was in a small town, but mm-hmm. nothing on the level of here in Texas. Because yes. there's so many avenues to get involved in sports as like an extracurricular for your kids yes so you were a soccer family but we were a soccer there's family basketball football uh, my boys swimming. both got scholarships to with you know for soccer oh nice yeah it's fun to think about uh plano dallas and just the general north texas area i know over the years we we didn't know what plano was when we lived, <laughs> when we left dallas we were in the lake highlands area we uh-huh. thought that was a suburb and then we come back uh, from Houston and live in Plano. Well, yeah, and think about the population now. It's hundreds of thousands of people. It's a city in its own yes. right. Yes. And Frisco will get there soon, too, I think. Yes. In the next couple of years, I'll overtake right. Plano in size. Right. And so now Plano has become kind of a senior community. Think like senior it. citizens? Yeah. <laughs> I think I disagree with you there. Okay. I think it's a more mature city. Right. Uh, but I wouldn't consider it a senior city. No, oh, maybe not. Maybe I not. I think it's a f- super family-centric. Yeah. It's a millennial. It's an like older millennial and baby boomer city. That's yeah. how I would yeah, think yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Part of that is probably because it's gotten too expensive for young families to get into. That's true. I mean, you got to go somewhere else to get first time. I mean, I used to track... You know, I do the market update every month, mm-hmm. and I used mm-hmm. to break it, the inventory down by price point. And I used to have a category of 250 and below, but now every month it's like there's zero options because that's kind of gone away. And now, I mean, the median yeah. price points are in the 500,000s, which if somebody's listening and they're from California, they're like 500,000 is a steal. But for people that have been here a while, like that feels expensive. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. I think you about. get more for your money here, don't you? Coming from California. Oh. I mean, Way more. a lot. I don't even know if you can, depending on where you're at, I don't yeah. think you can buy a condo for 500000 yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you get more. One of the things you mentioned earlier that was funny to think about, because you mentioned the rear entry yes. garages, which yes. I hadn't really seen much of that until living Until you here. came here. And I didn't think about how Houston is the same way, where it's front entry. Mm-hmm. But many, many, many of the neighborhoods here are designed with the rear entry garage. Which is just something that's different. I like it. It yeah. makes for prettier streets. It does. But it eats up a little of your backyard too at the same time. Well, it's it's it is it's just the way it is. Yeah. And everybody gets used to it. Yeah, but thinking about comparing to California, because yeah. growing up it just prompted me because growing up in California, I never saw like the rear entry garages. No. Now some people might have I, I was in a slightly more rural area, so some people might have a side entry garage. But, but it wasn't the back, the lots, you didn't have a, a right. back alley with, that you drove into. Right. And most of the really prestigious neighborhoods here still are the same thing. You drive in from the back of the house. A lot of them have rear entry, I mean, front entry with the drive, the garage where you pull right in. 
but it looks very nice. You can't tell it's a yeah, garage. Yeah, the, the new ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where they have the circular driveway. But yeah. Yeah. Not all my friends are buying houses like that yet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, cool. What other thoughts would you have for somebody who's interested in North Texas? How, what would you advise to give somebody who wants to move here or even living here? Well, you know what's important is not just coming here and not knowing somebody. So because we're doing this, I think it's so important to have a good realtor when you're looking. <laughs> and no, I'm, yeah. I'm serious. Uh, because you come and it's random. You don't even know where to start. So it's being that you've come here and learned the way. I think that's real important because you have so much to offer. Yeah, thank you. I think, yeah. Well, one of the things too, we had a client reach out to our team just this mm -hmm. last week. I shouldn't say client. They're not quite a client yet. But they reached out to our team just this week. and like, oh, I don't need an agent. I'll just go see the houses and make an offer. That's and I got to thinking about it. I was like, our, they're moving from somewhere else. And I was like, our market's just not set up that way. Like, mm -hmm. we don't really have open houses outside maybe, you know, once on a weekend for mm -hmm. a couple hours. And you can't really just... Some marketplaces have open houses, like, all day long where you can just come in and see the house without an agent. But we're really not set up for that no. here. Most people need an agent to get access. And really, I think the value of an agent is advice. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to think about it. not every marketplace is set up quite the same way. Right, right. Well, just for fun, because you, um, for title companies, closings happen at title companies. And it's usually a peak emotion in the transaction, like peak excitement sometimes, but, but sometimes not either. What are some funny stories you remember? Oh, my uh, gosh. Real estate closings. Um, we had a couple fly in from out of state with their bulldog. Uh -huh. And the bulldog had a cowboy hat on because he was moving to Texas. <laughs> so were, that's cute. That's fun. Uh, so they were ready. They were ready. Was this recently? No, a long, oh, long wow. time ago. Wow. Okay. So this is, yeah. Yeah. And then we had another one where the realtor, and I'm telling you, all of you realtors are so good. You, you're just on your game when it comes time to being creative and thinking outside the box. Um, this lady realtor had people coming in and they, I think, had some country property or maybe that's what they were buying. And the buyer, the lady, wanted a goat. And the realtor <laughs> walked in with a baby goat with a big red bow around his wow, neck. Wow, I yeah. never thought about that as a closing gift. Well, now you can <laughs> now think, I about can think about that. <laughs> or a bowl of goldfish or the something. Clients are going to have to tell me they, they really... Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to be yeah. on my menu of choices. That's funny to think about. They brought it literally to the closing yes. table as a gift. Yes. Wow, that's sweet. I mean, it's impactful. Yeah, it's, well, it's personal, too. It is very personal. Yeah, and then, of course, I think you sometimes have the divorces or the sales. Oh, that we do. Uh, high drama at the closing and, table. And we, we really try <laughs> so to be sensitive to that. And when there's a divorce um, and maybe they come at the same time, we can put one at the back of the room in another closing room and another, the other one at a different location. Mm, yeah. Because there's just different scenarios that go with all of it. Sometimes they're forced to. Um, there, We had a closing where a man came in and he was going to be homeless after his closing. How does that happen? Well, he was a problem, so oh. yeah. It just, it's the people business. So it's there's always business. interesting but stories. We, we know about it and we take care of it. We're discreet. Mm -hmm. We celebrate when it's time to celebrate. And we just yeah step to the side when, when, it's, it's, not. when it's not. I, my sister bought a house. She's since moved, but I mean, this was probably five or six years ago. Uh, she bought a house in Oklahoma. And she said it was like the first month that they had stopped doing closings where both parties are at the closing at the same time. What? I know. I thought that's so old fashioned to have both parties come to the closing table at the yeah. same time and all sign the paperwork together. Do you ever remember a time when that was happening here? I'm trying to think if we even closed with the sellers. I don't think so. No. Yeah. Now sellers can close online at yeah, home. Yeah. And why would you want to close with, I mean, so buying a house is a happy time. It's a wonderful time. Yeah. But then sometimes there's certain situations you don't know what the seller is going through. They're mm -hmm. maybe getting a divorce, so it's not a happy time for them. 
Well, you don't want that to bring your buyers down. Right. Well, sometimes yeah. sometimes each party has to give up yeah. a little bit in the yeah. negotiation too. And, and ultimately they're happy with the outcome, but they're not always mm-hmm. best friends. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just funny to think about that. And clients will sometimes say to me like, oh, are we going to meet the sellers? And I'm like, mm, probably not. They, like unless if they happen to have an appointment before or mm. after us at closing, yeah. you might bump into them. Otherwise, it's yeah. very uncommon to ever meet yeah. the previous homeowners. Yeah, that's, huh. that's uh, probably best not to because you you might want to negotiate some things on the side and maybe it gets awkward and uncomfortable <laughs> or who knows. But it's it's just best the way I like the way we do it. Here. Yeah, I always. Uh, Clients say, how long is closing going to take? And I says, it depends on how long you let me talk to you. <laughs> we might be really chatty. Otherwise, plan on 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so thinking about your role, uh, you're out and about town meeting a lot of people. What, what do you like most about what you do? I like, my favorite thing is my realtors, of uh-huh. course, because they become my friends. And I have a realtor that I work with who's in her upper 80s. They're still doing real estate. I have a gentleman who's 102. He literally? just retired. Yeah, <laughs> literally 102. He was my realtor. Oh, wow. And um, back in the 80s. So, yeah. I mean, Those are long relationships. Estate, well, that's what this is all about, relationships. And then you get repeat business from your mm-hmm. buyers and sellers and it, it, everybody just refers, and it's it's a good business because um, everything we do in the North Texas area, to me, real estate is effortless on when, when the customer sees it. The realtors yeah. work very hard, but they have a lot of tools and resources. Your board, your CCAR, Collin County Association of Realtors, leaves a lot available to the realtors to mm-hmm. learn and experience, and then they pass that on to their buyers and sellers. Well, this is what I think is funny, is we have these drama stories, if you will, about buying or selling. And I think, well, that's only because you wanted that. Mm-hmm. Like, it could be a very smooth, easy process. That's what I want for our clients. We My always, best compliment is when we say, that was yeah, easy. Yeah, I had yeah. somebody say that at closing, like, that was easy. I was like, yeah, I told you closing was gonna be easy. She's like, no, the whole thing. I was like, great, that's what we're aiming for. It doesn't have to be hard. It's like, if you want the drama, you can have it, but I don't want to be part of that. And that's the beauty of today versus, and I think I've told you my story about the MLS book being three Uh. inches thick. (laughs) And the MLS listings were in a big book. Uh And they were printed in black and white. And now you can go online and this is all... Everything's electronic and mm-hmm. computerized, and it's there. You it's can funny look to at think it. that's really only about twenty years old. I mean, I don't think the MLS or the internet was mainstream until the early two thousands. Like I bet in right. the nineties, people right. were still going yes. into real estate offices and looking at the book. You have to go get a key. To w- there was a lockbox, uh-huh. but you'd have to get the key to that lockbox from the realtor. I can only imagine having to run around chasing realtors to get keys. Yes, I have heard of real estate agents too that used to have yeah. fax machines they would take with them, <laughs> like <laughs> on a trip, <laughs> so they could fax contracts and paperwork. Oh my back gosh! And forth. Wow. Now you can do it all on your phone. Yeah, I remember yeah. putting together a deal when I was at Disneyland in line one day. <laughs> Like, so the technology is really See, amazing. That's, yeah. Yeah. So it's fun to think about all the changes. And it's kind of exciting to think where we're headed to. And it makes your people happy because they're not having to wait for you to get back in town so we can address that whatever. <laughs> so we can drive the yeah. contract over and sign. <laughs> now, I have had clients that I did go drive the contract over mm-hmm. and sign, but that was not because of a technology problem. Yeah. It was a preference that they had. Sure. But but yeah, and that's what <laughs> so you do. weird to think about. Yeah, how yeah. that was just the norm yeah. for before. Well, is there anything else you want to share with the audience that maybe I, I can't missed? Think of anything. Cool. Well, you, again, thank you for joining us today. If somebody wants to learn about you or Republic Title, what's the best way to connect? I'm at Republic Title Plano. Preston Legacy is our location. Yeah. My email is cnelson at republictitle.com. Awesome. So you can reach out and share Texas stories or 
If they want to buy or sell a house. Or if they want to the right ask way. for a good realtor. Yeah. We Perfect. know them all. I bet you do. <laughs> Well, again, thanks for your time, You're and welcome. I wish you a prosperous 2023. Thank you, Matt. Have you been thinking about moving to North Texas? Maybe you're looking in Plano, Dallas, Frisco, or the surrounding communities. Each year, our team helps dozens of families make the move to Texas. We'd love to help you begin your journey. Learn more on our website at HastingsRE.com. That's H-A-I-S-T-I-N-G-S-R-E.com. 